Good morning, everybody, uh, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on the time zone. Welcome to the, today's webinar. Um, as you can see in the chat, the session will be recorded, and there is a Q&A field in which you can ask questions all the time during the whole session. We will have a Q&A block at the end, and we will answer the questions at the end. Um, so yeah, welcome to today's webinar. Um, we're talking today about monitoring as code with Shackley and Terraform Cloud. Uh, we, that means um, Andreas Lea, Senior IT Architect from Schwarz IT, Giovanni Raggio, Head of Developer Relations from Shackley, and myself, Carsten Do, Senior Solutions Engineer at HashiCorp. Before we start, let's have a look at the agenda. So I will give you a short introduction into HashiCorp and what Terraform is and why infrastructure as code is important. Then Giovanni will show you how Checkly works, and how monitoring as code works together with Terraform. He will also give you a short demo about that. And Andreas will talk about their use case, about their case study they've implemented at Schwarz IT. And he will also give a short demo about how they're using it. And last but not least, we will have time for Q&A. So what is Terraform? Some of you might know our products. Maybe you don't know who HashiCorp is. So Terraform is one of HashiCorp's products. HashiCorp is known as one of the leading cloud infrastructure automation companies. So we deliver software, we create software that enables you to provision, secure, connect, and run your applications in the cloud and beyond. And that means we have really helped you to unlock the cloud operating model. Uh, no matter if it runs on AWS, Azure, VMware, OpenStack, uh, Kubernetes, you name it, our solutions help you to operate and provision your software in a secure manner uh, across these stacks. We have customers worldwide, more than 1,700 enterprise customers, and a lot of them are uh, part of the Fortune 500 or the Global 2000. Uh, you might recognize some well-known logos here. Uh, I don't want to go through all of them. We also work together with partners. Shackley is one of them, but of course, we work closely together with cloud partners, with SaaS partners, even hardware partners um, like AWS uh, or Oracle or GitHub, et cetera, you name it. I already said we help you to unlock the cloud operation model. What does that mean? So with our software stack tour from World Console and Nomad, we help you to have a consistent workflow de to deploy your infrastructure and software in a secure way. And this means there are different layers in the stack from infrastructure to security, to networking, to the application layer. Today, we will focus more, or we will focus on the infrastructure layer, which is used to deploy your resources in the infrastructure, if it's AWS, Azure, GCP, uh, or on-prem. And the tool of choice here is Terraform. So Terraform is our tool to provide to infrastructure as code to deploy you, your infrastructure or your resources to your cloud of choice. Um, it can also deploy stuff for on-prem data centers or directly into Kubernetes, etc. Terraform is built on providers. So the implementation for platforms is based on these providers. There are more than 300, I think it's even, even 500 or uh, more providers available. Um, most of them are uh, community maintained. A lot of them, the professional ones, are maintained by us and um, are uh, officially supported by us. And a lot of them are also maintained and officially supported by, for example, uh, cloud vendors, etc. There's almost no device or almost no platform which is not available as a provider. So um, a colleague of mine even has created 
a provider to uh, yeah to deploy a pizza at Domino's, <laughs> so you can actually order a pizza at Domino's uh, in the US via Terraform if you want to do that. So even that is possible. We have more than one hundred thousand weekly downloads of Terraform, and we have user groups, and that means we have more than thirty thousand members in our worldwide user groups, and we also have the HashiConf event. Um, I think the next one will be in October, so stay tuned for that. The guiding principle is infrastructure as code. That means you describe your desired state of your resources in a text file. That's the code. And Terraform makes sure that the infrastructure as described will be deployed. You use a version control. You can use a version control workflow for that. And the idea behind that is automation to completely reduce human errors and to reduce failed builds. Um, so you get completely recreatable stuff. It's documenting itself because you already write your stuff into code. So if the person who has created that is no longer with the company, then uh, any other colleague can just have a look into that code and they will directly see, oh, there's a server deployed with this uh, connection, et cetera, et cetera. So everything can be seen in that text file. The idea behind it, to make it secure, is also uh, policy-based. So with this code and policy, um, you have an automated and secure way to deploy your stuff. And so previously mentioned providers really help you to rapidly create infrastructure no matter where it runs. To be fully compliant and to be able to manage it safely, we also offer a Sentinel policy framework and cost uh, control. Cost control means um, clouds offer an API for cost estimation. And this cost estimation can be included in Terraform Enterprise and Terraform Cloud so that you can see after the planning stage what your resources uh, will, will be charged for per month. So that's a cost estimation. If you use Sentinel policies, you can, for example, from the security or financial department, write a policy which then makes sure that your uh, cost is not exceeding, for example, 5,000 US dollars per month for this type of deployment. Um, but you can also, of course, enforce stuff like um, each resource group needs a department tag. So that if you later look into AWS and you see your source group, that you are all, always able to see that this resource group was created for this department. So therefore, you have um, security policies, sentiment policies, and cost control. And this really helps you to reduce the risk. Um, you have a central point for compliance and management. You can reduce the cost. Um, you can yeah, make sure that overspending is not happening. And uh, with the workflow, you can really increase your productivity because it happens automatically. Terraform also helps you to implement a self-service infrastructure. Your infrastructure's code definitions can be modulized. So uh, Terraform offers you a registry capability and you can put your uh, infrastructure as code snippets as modules in the registry so that they can be reused. For example, if you have a standardized VM deployment, you can just create a module for it and then others can reuse it. Um, that means they just need to use that snippet um, with the, uh, and um, yeah, add some variables, for example, with the versioning control system, and then they can just redeploy it with different variables and you can just deploy the same stuff, for example, for a dev environment. Um, we also offer uh, an API for Terraform. That means it can be easily integrated in ITSM systems, um, we for, especially for ServiceNow. We have a direct integration available, so it can be really easily integrated in ServiceNow. 
However, the, IT, uh, the, the idea behind Terraform is an automate, automated workflow. So this version control based workflow is what you usually want to do. You want to completely prevent manual interaction to really have a consistent automated workflow which prevents human errors. Um, and um, with uh, this uh, integration into ITSM, uh, you can additionally uh, reduce the risk uh, because then people just have to enter their variables, for example, in, into the ITSM system and everything else happens in the background. Policies additionally can, of course, also help you to uh, enforce some uh, settings and rules. So let's have a little look into the configuration file itself. I said infrastructure as code means you write code. How does that code look like. Um, the cloud provision with Terraform happens with HCL files. HCL stands for HashiCorp Configuration Language. HCL um, is yeah, um, a format created by us, as the name says. Um, the idea behind it is to create a really human-friendly format, which is also readable by computers as well and humans um, at, at the same time. In the example here in that screen, you can see, for example, there is a Google Compute instance created with identifier server and the name server, and that's a declarative approach. You describe what you want to have at the end, what the goal is, and not how to deploy it, because how to deploy it, that's what Terraform as a provider already knows. So with this declarative approach, you say, I want to have a server, I want to have uh, this DNS record, for example, and this is what happens. This is what is getting created if you apply that configuration with Terraform. If you apply this a second time, then it will not be created again uh, because Terraform works item for 10. That means it will automatically detect the identifier is already there. It will compare the desired state with the existing state and it will prevent to create something a second time. Um, ACL also offers functions like loops, counts, variables, functions, etc. So it's somehow a uh, development language. While it's not a fully functional development language, we can also do rather complex tasks with it if we want to do. So Terraform can really be your single control plane for your provisioning. And I would say not even for your cloud, also for your data centers. Um, because it really helps you to automate control and provision infrastructure, no matter where it runs, if it runs in a private data center or the public cloud, or even if it has to interact with other SaaS solutions uh, that works perfect. It really helps you to, to create this unified workflow and support across heterogeneous environments. And with the integration of the providers, it really helps you uh, to utilize these providers to to uh, have a really fast onboarding to really start creating stuff without um, worrying about the, the um, platforms at the end. Last but not least, Terraform and all our products are available in two options. Um, first option is self-managed option. So you can deploy Terraform Enterprise on your own self-managed in your own data center or in the cloud. And the other option is we have the HashiCorp managed option. Uh, we have the HashiCorp cloud platform and Terraform cloud available. That means it's, it's a fully managed solution by us. We cover the disaster recovery. We cover the operations for you. So don't, you don't have to worry about that. Um, if you want to start really fast, then that might be the best solution for you. So that was my introduction about HashiCorp and Terraform. Now I will hand over to Giovanni and he will give you an overview about Checkly and monitoring as code. Thank you, Karsten. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Giovanni Rago, so um, head of DevRel at Checkly. I'm just gonna share my screen and hopefully you can see my presentation. And um, yeah, thank you, Carson, for the introduction. That uh, actually makes my life a lot easier because I'm also 
going to be speaking about Terraform. Maybe I can skip a few slides. Um, so what I do at Checkly is I am uh, working with our customers, uh, including Andreas, who will introduce uh, the use case at Schwartz uh, in just a few minutes. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just talk about uh, monitoring as code in a, in a general fashion before we actually dive into a concrete use case together with Schwartz. So the, um, I think the, the first thing that we should do is actually take a step back and talk about, uh, I call it here, traditional monitoring before we actually speak about monitoring as code. So this is what we run into a lot of the time when, uh, when we speak to businesses out there, we still find um, that when uh, monitoring resources are being provisioned, this is uh, being done manually. Uh, it's being done uh, through uh, in a fragmented workflow. So we have, um, uh, we see uh, businesses that are uh, provisioning different types of monitoring resources on different platforms in different ways, right? And this ends up being not very transparent, pretty hard to document. And the issues there, uh, as a result, are uh, quite clear. Um, it is an approach that's too slow at scale, right? So when you actually have to monitor, uh, you know, whatever you're monitoring, be it different uh, API endpoints, different applications, uh, this becomes rather slow at scale if you have to do it uh, manually, let's say at human speed. Um, when it comes to uh, also the workflow, the, the fragmentation makes, uh, of course, it acts a, as a complexity multiplier, right? Fragmentation, I, I think about it as a, almost a synonym of complexity, or definitely you can say that these two are, are tightly related. Um, and of course, whenever we have bad documentation, uh, this is hindering collaboration, right? Uh, it adds room for error and makes it hard for us to work together with our colleagues. So. All in all, the result is slower delivery and worse, uh, worse results, right? But actually, if we stop and think about this, this is nothing new. This is an old problem. We've seen it already. Those of you who are doing IAC infrastructure as code today uh, know that uh, uh, that was the solution to the same issue in the infrastructure field, right? So actually here, what we can do is maybe learn a lesson from IAC and uh, bring it or declinate it towards monitoring, right? So uh, we already have our path laid out in front of us here. Uh, so here, I just want to uh, once more uh, mention, just take another step back and mention again what infrastructure as code looks like, right? So Carsten showed us an example with Terraform already. Terraform is what I'm gonna use for my, uh, for my demo here as well. And in the end, what we're doing again is we have these files, right? Config files, text files um, uh, written in HCL. Uh, we specify exactly what the end result should look like for our infrastructure. We plug in a provider in our example here, maybe the AWS provider, and then we start defining resources in a declarative fashion, right? Might be uh, you know, a, a T2 instance on, on AWS, right? The advantages of this are the speed, scalability, the cohesiveness of the provisioning, and of course, the fact that these files act as documentation. We use them uh, to uh, um, have Terraform deploy things for us, but of course, we can easily read them as well. Um, then, of course, Terraform is going gonna, is gonna to take care of the grant work. So we're provisioning infrastructure at machine speed, not human speed, let's say. And um, uh, we actually can plug in all different kinds of infrastructure providers through the provider ecosystem that we were talking about. The next ingredient in my recipe here, before I jump into the demo, I need to introduce Checkly. Uh, Checkly is essentially a, an active monitoring platform that allows you to test and monitor the performance and correctness of your system, APIs and websites, right? And it looks sort of like this. Let me just jump out here and show my dashboard. This is how I would actually go about uh, creating a check manually. Um, let's say that I wanted to make sure that my um, hobby uh, project or my personal website was uh, up and running all the time and loading correctly. What I could do is jump into a browser check here. Uh, let's say, let's call it site is loading in this case. 
I'm just going to monitor my um, personal website. And of course, here I have all the power of Playwright, right? So I could actually do a whole lot of more complex stuff. But in this case, I'm just going to run this very basic script, check it out, see if it works. Um, and then I can actually create this as a check, essentially schedule this, um, uh, this check to run continuously. So I can continuously verify that the site is loading or again, any other more complex flow, right? And you know this works just fine when I have to create one or two checks for my hobby project. Uh, you already can imagine that when Schwartz is doing things and they have hundreds or thousands of checks, this is probably not the way to go, right? No matter how nice our UI is. So actually going back to the slides here now, uh, that is not the only thing that we do. We, I think the, the third point on this slide is extremely important. Uh, we, uh, as Checkly, uh, really put a lot of effort into offering uh, a great experience in what we call monitoring as code, right? Which is uh, kind of the, the fulcrum of, of this talk here. And we do that through Terraform right now. Terraform is our, um, let's say, our workhorse here. Uh, we want to always have our Terraform provider uh, treated as a first-class citizen and essentially uh, give you the ability to do everything on Checkly as code through Terraform. So this is our Terraform, um, um, our Terraform provider live on the official Terraform registry. Uh, this is where you would find uh, all the documentation, you know, code samples as well. So if you plan to uh, try this out after the webinar. Uh, just uh, look it up. Look up Checkly on the official HashiCorp Terraform registry, and you will see everything. You'll find everything you need there. Uh, but now I want to give you a sneak peek, and we can see how all that we talked about so far actually works together and comes together as monitoring as code. So I'm just gonna jump out here and. Um, go back quickly to our empty Checkly dashboard here. Again, we have no checks. In this case, we're gonna uh, pretend that we, uh, let's say, are setting up a, a brand new uh, monitoring setup. And uh, for that, I have a little bit of a project ready already. And uh, what it looks like, I'm just gonna quickly uh, give another example, is this. So we are essentially using uh, Terraform together with the Checkly provider again. And uh, this big file that I have here, which is maybe not following all the best practices, but <laughs> will still work, uh, is essentially specifying a list of Checkly resources. Uh, these are API checks, browser checks, uh, alert channels, uh, code snippets that we want uh, to be provisioned in a specific way to make sure that our infrastructure is monitored um, uh, entirely, right? And imagine now that we do not only have this one file here, but we also have other, this lives as part of a Terraform configuration that spans, um, you know, infrastructure, AWS infrastructure and, uh, you know, uh, stuff on Google Cloud or, or whatever. This can really be as complex as you like. The idea is that here uh, we want to have our infrastructure defined, and we will also want to define together with it the way that it should be monitored, right? So this will then live in source control. And this is actually where, uh, where this project lives. So I have this as a repository on GitHub, and let me make that a little bit bigger. And actually, if I go and do a git status, I see that I've just added a readme file here because my project actually doesn't have one right now. So that's something that we definitely want to add. And once I commit that, uh, we can imagine that I'm actually committing infrastructural changes, but this is just for the sake of example. I've actually uh, linked this repository to a uh, Terraform Cloud workspace. What this does for me is essentially anytime I modify my infrastructure definitions in this project, um, Terraform Cloud will pick up on it and apply all the changes, right? So the idea here is I could be modifying the um, infrastructure definitions 
uh, about, say, my AWS instances in a file in this, in this project, and right next to it, uh, I, I will at the same time go and modify the monitoring resource definitions as well, and then commit everything, and we will have the new infrastructure provisioned and the monitoring for it provisioned as well. So let me just add my readme here, have a quick commit on my branch here that I've already created. Just gonna use this as a quick trigger. And here we go. Now, once this is pushed, I've actually configured my Terraform workspace to pick this up automatically and apply everything without a need for, um, for further intervention. What could happen is also we could um, set this up so that I have to um, first uh, confirm the changes, right? So I would see the planned changes and then I would be able to um, uh, to accept them or not accept them, right? Uh, here in this case, let me just jump to my repository and I am going to create a pull request, merge my changes immediately, and this will kick off finally our, um, our project on Terraform Cloud. So again, we are looking at an empty project on checklist side. No checks are defined at all. Now we are seeing uh, Terraform Cloud calculating all the changes that need to happen so that all my resources are created. This just takes a few seconds. We see actually a preview of all the monitoring resources that will be created on Checkly. And when I go back to my dashboard here and I'm gonna force a refresh, we now see quite some um, quite some groups and checks provisioned, right? Most of the checks will be pending. Some are running already. And we can actually uh, essentially provision a complex setup just like that. And you've seen we've done this uh, at the speed of the machine and not at the speed of a human. I didn't have to go crazy through this, uh, well, beautiful UI, I must say. But uh, I actually could do this in a way more efficient fashion. So what did we enable exactly here? We enabled the monitoring as code workflow, right? We were able, thanks to Terraform Cloud that was listening to uh, my repository changes, as soon as we uh, changed, uh, had a change in our infrastructure, in this case, our monitoring infrastructure specifically, um, we changed the definitions and Terraform Cloud picked up on that and said, all right, I'm gonna provision all of that, be it, you know, a change in your uh, web application or a change in how we actually go and monitor it, right? Everything will be adapted um, and upgraded at one time. So wait a second, Giovanni, isn't that just infrastructure as code with monitors though? Uh, so this comes up uh, sometimes and it's a good question. Uh, I think what's important is uh, programmability in this case. So what we're doing here is not just making our lives a little bit simpler by, uh, let's say, taking out a piece of the man of the manual process. Is actually we want to go past specifying the basic config parameters of our monitoring resources and essentially be able to specify everything as code, have everything live in source control, and essentially. Uh, put ourselves in a position where we can uh, do really uh, have our, so in a position where we can have the entirety of our workflow as code. We do not need to go through any UIs, right? We have our definitions in front of us. That's our living documentation. And that is also what we use to, uh, let's say, or, or what we uh, instantiate as our infrastructure and our monitoring all at once, right? So that is what makes the difference. Just a quick recap uh, to wrap this all up. What did we achieve by having this monitoring as code set up? Well, better scalability, uh, right? So this was more efficient as provisioning. It was faster. Again, we moved at the speed of the machine. And I didn't have to figure out all the actions I needed to do to set up my checks properly. Terraform, in this case, Terraform Cloud took care of that. Uh, increased transparency and, and easier rollbacks, right? Because we, again, we moved all of this to source control. 
uh, we can read the definitions uh, very easily. We can easily roll back uh, using our, our source control uh, usual flow. Um, and now we are, thanks to Terraform, plugging in different providers maybe and uh, having all the definitions in one place as code. And uh, this enables us uh, or enables a pure CI CD workflow that uh, before we would have actually been massively slowed down. So that was it uh, for me. I, I hope I managed to give you a general uh, feel for what uh, monitoring as code is and what it can look like. Uh, now we're going to go uh, deeper into the weeds and look at the real world use case. Andreas, uh, this is your turn. Please take it away. So, hi everybody from my side. So my name's Andreas um, and I'm now digging a bit deeper inside our use case. So you should be able to see my screen now as well. Um, um, I have a bit of a cold, so I hope this works out. <laughs> so about uh, Schwarz IT, so to make a small introduction, um, we are the central IT of the Schwarz Group. The Schwarz Group is the biggest retailer in Europe with uh, its famous retail brands, uh, Lidl and Kaufland. You can see some of our stores on the right side. Uh, we also have a production unit. It's called Schwarz Production, where we are producing goods. We are selling uh, like ice cream and coffee, water and stuff like that. Uh, we also have a, a huge recycling brand now. It's called B0. Um, we are roughly around 500,000 employees. Uh, we are also live on the East Coast of the US already. So some of you might know us from there as well. Um, currently, we have stores in 33 countries and headquarters as well. And we have a career page on English. Uh, it's careers.schwarz, where you can find more information um, on our company. And yes, we have Dot Schwarz as top level domain, which is kind of cool. Um, our challenge um, when monitoring, of course, we are a retailer. We also have a lot of uh, websites and brands and online shops. Um, depending uh, on the country, we'll have several uh, shops live and huge online presences where people can inform about offers in our stores. Um, and that's, uh, it's vital for us that everything is uh, live online and that we are always ahead of the situation in case something is down. So um, we have several tools in use or had several tools in use in the past for end-to-end -end monitoring. Um, we came across Checkly and find out that it's a, a modern solution um, and that's something we needed. So we need a solution that would be accepted by our users, uh, would be easy to use and yeah, we had existing stuff in place. So our internal customers or the customers we weren't aware of because they were using the third or fourth uh, solution in another country. Um, we need to provide minimal migration effort to convince them to go to the new um, solution. Everybody has lots of stuff to do um, as everywhere. And so we need to minimize the impact. Um, our mantra is as well, everything as code nowadays. So everything should be described as code. And this also means monitoring as code um, in our case. And why not use infrastructure as code methods to configure and deploy software as a service solutions as well. Um, and so we find out that, that um, yeah, um, it would be great to have something uh, which could be configured via Terraform as well so that we don't have to hassle around with single sign on and users and permissions for software as a service tools like Checkly. Yeah, and the thing that makes us, uh, that we is, is a little bit different from, from maybe other smaller companies, we have a huge internal auditing department um, and we want to make them happy as well um, and, and create reproducible and auditable stuff. Yeah, and Currently, that's our solution. I'm, I'm showing uh, in the live demo in a yeah, couple of minutes. Uh, so we are currently on Azure DevOps um, and Terraform. Um, so the whole company is using, using different Azure DevOps repositories. We're using the pipelines there as well. Um, on the right side, you see 
an example. It's a bit uh, small from uh, a Terraform run of Checkly. Um, yeah, and as I said before, why not use infrastructure as code for SaaS applications as well? Um, we want to have a secure, auditable, and reproducible configuration. Um, Giovanni showed us that before we are uh, instantly creating several checks as we are using several hundred uh, checks in Checkly or maybe also over a thousand now. I don't have the exact figure. It's vital for us to have something which is easily reproducible. Um, and uh, yeah, the easiest thing is to, to have it in a Git repository, right? Um, so we are providing two different solutions to our internal customers. They could either choose to use the self-service approach and uh, gain access to the repository, make a pull request, change their check, their alerting, their frequency, or their browser check, and, and do it completely by themselves, or uh, the customers can have our team as service provider if they are not familiar with uh, their Terraform or doing stuff in Git. And what's also important for us is that the configuration, configuration is transparent and self-explaining, and that's really the case. So uh, everybody of you might know that if you have a separate configuration, uh, then from your documentation, you always have uh, need to have a follow up. A, we need to change the documentation. The documentation is kind of old and uh, we need to resynchronize it. And that's uh, never needed if you follow this approach, which is uh, very nice for us. So um, now doing a small uh, live demo. Oops. One second. So this is um, our Checkly um, front end. As you've seen before, it's a nice UI. <laughs> Giovanni told that multiple types, it's really the case. So um, we're organizing everything in folders. You can, for example, here see some of the browser checks we're currently doing on, on our German web shops with card login stuff like that. Um, you'll um, then see um, yeah, the mean response times. You can dig deeper into, hey, how was this check from Frankfurt running? You can also see screenshots from the different steps in the browser check. So, but that's not what I wanted to show you now. So we are using uh, the multi-client capability. Um, and so I'm switching to our test account now where I really can yeah, uh, oops, create, where is it again? So it seems like the folder's missing. Uh -huh. So maybe one of the colleagues um, did run something in the back, but that's not much of a problem. Um, uh, interesting. So um, I'm switching over to Azure DevOps now and it will recreate everything, at least from, from that what I know. So this should be possible. Um, Giovanni showed you before how this whole thing looks like. So here you see the folders again. Um, we have our locations where we're running stuff from. We're using Ops Genie as an escalation. So our test folder has no uh, escalation policy, um, which is kind of nice. And I have a um, kind of a test on VDDE, which is an API check and is checking if the status, the HTTP status code from this URL is equals 200. So, and what I'm now doing, so I prepared that, I'm adding two checks. Um, I'm just doing this in the front end because it's easier for you to show. So we are adding an uptime check for hashicop.com and for checkly.com. Um, as I'm doing the demo now, I can um, uh, accept the pull request myself, but this should of course not be the case um, when you're doing it. So I now approved my own pull request, which is kind of nice. And now there's a, um, the build is queued and I hope it will run. It will do a Terraform try run, which is kind of a lot nicer if you're on Terraform Cloud as we have seen it before. 
um, it will do a validate plan and then um, yeah, run the Terraform apply, which is then creating um, everything we have seen before. So we have to wait some seconds. So I need to fill up with some talking. You can see now here everything we are currently creating or it's checking the state and refreshing it. So um, we have a lot of stuff already inside checking. That's why it's taking some time. So um, should finish finish now. I think you can uh, you can click on the home, um, Andreas, and that should should, should reset my view. Dashboard. Ah, now there it is. So, ah, okay, I was in the wrong one. So this one is our testing folder, and this is our check on LeetleDE. You can hear some see some sample checks because we're using that for the demo as well. Um, that you can see, hey, uh, this is what it looks like if everything's in the right state. Um, so the two checks should be uh, added in. Uh, so now the build was succeeded, so it should. Um, uh, one second. Uh, now the apply is running. So before we are checking, of course, um, and we now have to wait till till the apply is finished. Um, should be really done in some seconds. <laughs> so yes, that is. So we now have the two additional checks from Checkly. And from HashiCorp, they are now scheduled to run on a five-minute basis. I can run them now, so they are that they are now um, live. So, and I can now go on, of course, as I am one of the admins of the project, and delete a check over here or change it um, by accident, for example. Um, and then I just have to um, rerun the pipeline. And it will basically reset the state as it has been before. Um, so if somebody overrides something, and that's that's also very nice. So you always have your state um, inside your Terraform repository, and it will always be the single source of truth, which is which is important. So time's now running up for the webinar, so I have to go a bit faster. Um, pipeline is now running, but that's something I want to show because that's really key for us in that story. So Terraform is just recreating the state as it's it should be. It takes some seconds and then the check will reappear down here. Come on, come on. And as you might can imagine, if you're using um, hundreds uh, or thousands of checks, this is uh, very vital so that there don't happen changes inside something like the Checkly front end, or we're also using that configuration approach now for other software as a service tools, which is, uh, which is really great. And we are now focusing when we are purchasing new stuff that they are able to be configured like that. So the check reappeared, which I, recently deleted and that's that's very cool. So um, some more words on our use case. Um, what, what are the benefits and highlights? So we really have now this situation where we can have monitoring as code together with Terraform. What we like on Checkly are the browser checks with Puppety and Playwright, with, which are both open source. They can easily be developed by, um, by everybody with uh, the use of the headless recorder. You can import that as an extension in Chrome or a Chrome-like browser and just record your check, copy and paste the code and, uh, and then run the check. So it's really easy. Checkly also has a new functionality for high frequency checks, which is, which is really cool when you have um, uh, important stuff which is running online. So you have 
the possibility to run API checks on a 10 second basis and browse browser checks uh, on 60 seconds interval. That's cool. We are really glad that we can now use multi client as a capability. You've seen before I messed it up. Uh, um, going back to our test account, <laughs> but um, it really works great. We're also using the Prometheus exporter with Grafana dashboards and uh, creating them on an automatic way. Uh, and we can use our L L existing alerting tools like Obsgenie Teams, um, webhooks, or if people want it, email, but you should really avoid using email for uh, notification and escalation. Yeah. Um, I also have a, a Outlook slide, sorry for that, it was a bit slow. So we want to migrate to Terraform Cloud. We, we've seen a lot of benefits in that as well in this kind of process. Uh, we're currently, we are searching for internal POC customers for internal check tree runners so that we are able to run it from non-AWS locations and be able to monitor internal applications with the same process, which would really be great. Uh, yeah, we are integrating the single sign on and we are doing a lot of internal marketing and we are, are currently in the rollout phase of checking to all our internal customers. That's basically it from our side. So then I hand over to Carsten for the Q&A. Yeah, thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, we actually have a couple of questions in the chat and one in the question of function. So if we have any further questions, please use the question of function. Um, that's the most easiest one for us to follow. Uh, let me scroll to, to the chat. Okay, the question, first question was, do locations in Terraform check leak code here means running all checks from different AWS AZs simultaneously? Uh, great question. So um, Checkly allows you to run from uh, global AWS locations. Uh, how we do that right now is in a uh, round robin fashion. So you're not, uh, let's say, if you configure a check to run from multiple locations, like the list that you might have seen in some of those uh, Terraform resources, these will be run uh, one after the other, right? Um, but in general, if you really want to have uh, to run from multiple locations at the same time, you can still create multiple checks and you are still able to um, uh, set a cadence, which is something that we haven't really looked at specifically in the webinar, um, but you can set a cadence for your checks and essentially choose at which interval they um, these checks are running. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how that works. Yeah, cool. uh, next question is why not using Terraform Cloud in Schwarz IT? Yeah, I think that was already answered. You are currently migrating to it. But um, next question is, is the Checkly Terraform provider open source? Uh, yes, it is. You can find that on GitHub. I actually am going to uh, find the link and post it in the chat. So next question was, oh, it's scrolling a little bit fast. Let me see. What happens if the planning or applying fails after you merge the pull request in Terraform Cloud? Uh, I think that's a question I can answer. Um, if, uh, if, uh, uh, if something fails in the Terraform uh, plan or apply phase, uh, you are uh, obviously getting a, a warning or error message within Terraform Cloud. Uh, you will see which resources are failed. You will get the output so you can debug it. Uh, you can set notifications if something fails. Uh, that's also possible. So, but Terraform Cloud really helps you to get, uh, it really helps you to debug it uh, with, the, with the tools in the UI and also the log files. Uh, let's see, the chat is scrolling really fast. Uh, one more question is the UI looks simple and intuitive. May I know on which front end technology it's built? Oh, that's a good question. I believe uh, that is uh, mostly Vue.js. So then next question is, you mentioned Checkly for internal websites. How are you going forward with this as I don't see an on-prem Checkly option in the website? Yeah, uh, good catch. So this is something I, I cannot say much about this at the moment. So this is something that we 
are working on uh, with a few design partners and you guessed it, uh, Schwartz is one of them. So uh, this is something to keep an eye on for the near future, uh, but I, I cannot share any details on it right now. See what else do we have? Uh, what is the best way to do an API check that includes many steps? For example, if I have an API check to delete a book, I first need to create a book. What uh, would you use the setup scripts for this? Uh, yes, yes, that's exactly right. So, um, just going to add a couple couple of details onto that. Um, you know how we chose to implement the checks is as totally atomic units. Um, they have to run independently to be able to run on independent schedules and essentially to avoid um, uh, so this is a best practice because you you avoid a lot of issues when you have self-contained uh, checks uh, they can run in any order there is no interdependence if one check dies it does not somehow affect the other check right uh, we chose to Kind of enforce industry best practices that are also if you know if any if uh, anybody uh, listening is from the testing field you hear this you know like drilled into you uh from the very beginning and there is a reason um um but uh for uh, specifically for uh, what was the what the question was about uh yes setup scripts are the way to go um so for everyone um essentially checks have uh, on Checkly, they have a main part, right? Uh, in the case of an API check, this is uh, the main HTTP request. Then you can plug in assertions and other things. Uh, but what you also have that gives you a huge degree of freedom is setup scripts and teardown scripts. Setup scripts are uh, scripts um, uh, that you can run, uh, that run before the main HTTP request. And here you can do everything you need. Uh, create test resources, uh, on your backend, uh, uh, pull uh, you know any sort of data, fetch token, and then feed that into the main request. And teardown uh, are scripts that run after that request and can influence everything that happens before the end of your check, assertion, and so on and so forth. Uh, yes, to to be clear once again, yes, uh, the setup script is what you would use in this in this scenario. It's also important and vital for browser checks, if I may add to uh, something. So, for example, we have a browser check which is uh, searching for an article and putting it into the basket and then going to the checkout. This does not work if the article has no stock. So, you need to make sure that you have an article which has an uh, active, active stock in, inside your real user test. That's very true. I just want to reiterate uh, this one more time. Essentially, what uh, um, this is, uh, I think, goes also past Checkly. Uh, try to always have, uh, you know, checks that are fully self-contained, right? They take care, the idea is that they take care of their setup and of their teardown. And things are, at the end, like they uh, were before the beginning, right? So you're always having a fresh start. And that just will make your life easier down the road. One more question is, uh, what is the resource or compute allocated for each check? Uh, as the performance results depends on the resource allocated as well. Yeah, yeah um, I, um, I believe we have that exactly documented. So I'm going to uh, go in and find the link and post it uh, in the chat. Uh, but uh, we are currently using uh, AWS Lambda for our runners, right? So that's what we're running on. I will see if I can find the exact uh, details and, and post them in the chat. Okay, one more question. Any plans for cross-plane or Pulumi provider, especially cross-plane gained a huge momentum? Sorry, what was the first one? Yeah, any plans for cross-plane or Pulumi provider, especially cross-plane gained a huge momentum? Uh, I believe we do not have uh, a plan for that. We do get quite some requests for uh, Pulumi provider. Uh, I know that we have an, an open item for that on our public roadmap. Uh, that's also a link I'm going to post in the chat. So um, we try to be as transparent as possible at Checkly. So uh, we just have our public roadmap on GitHub and you can just you know request or upvote issues there. 
that goes straight to our head of product. And oftentimes we pick uh, these and uh, yeah, um, essentially make them part of the official product roadmap. But uh, yeah, going back to the question again, so far, I believe no concrete plan uh, in the next months for Pulumi or Crossplay provider yet. Okay. Another question, can the checks run only on schedule or also on deploy if I want to test my app before it goes live? Right. So this is uh, one of the big things we're trying to do at Checkly uh, is to, you know, bring testing and monitoring together as much as possible. And um, uh, what that means is you can set up checks to run on a schedule. We've seen that, but you can also uh, link your checks uh, so that they are uh, triggered on demand. We have a few different ways to go about that. You can do that manually through uh, sort of a trigger. Uh, or you can, exa for example, do it with a Checkly or Vercel, sorry, a GitHub or Vercel integration. And what that does is essentially, um, say a provider like Vercel is going to uh, deploy a PR um, uh, with your, your latest changes and Checkly will automatically run uh, checks against this uh, preview deployment. Um, and then, you know, based on the result, you can decide to go ahead and merge that PR and go live or or not, right? And you can build an additional layer of automation uh, there as well. Okay, so there are no more questions. Um, so thanks for all the great questions. Uh, this has been more than expected. Really, uh, really good questions. Uh, thanks everybody for attending the webinar today. Uh, the recording will be made available on YouTube and uh, the link will be sent to all attendees as well. Uh, thanks Andreas, thanks Giovanni uh, for presenting. I think that was really interesting for a lot of people. Uh, I personally uh, wasn't aware how cool it is now. <laughs> I think that's a really, really nice solution. I really liked it and I probably see, we will see that integration uh, in a lot of customer environments in the future uh, because it's a lot of benefit to existing Terraform deployments as well. Um, so thanks everybody and yeah, have a nice uh, day. Bye-bye.